Black Dog, which is out now in theaters, and you can watch it on Paramount Plus. Congratulations on the movie. It's been a huge hit really? in our house yeah. and so many houses around there and on the box office as well. For anyone who hasn't caught it yet, tell us what it's about and who you play. I play Uncle Casey, who is babysitting his little niece, Emily Elizabeth, from the books, and uh, he makes the fatal error of allowing her to get a dog that weekend, and then Clifford, the little dog that she gets, grows to be 10 feet tall and very, very red and uh, <laughs> causes chaos around Manhattan. So, yeah, it's a really fun, sweet family movie. Uh, this, like, iconic character that I didn't really know about that much in yeah, England. Yeah, it wasn't a big thing uh, no. for us growing up. But then it? I got yeah. cast in it, and all of a sudden my phone blew up. All of my friends in America were like, this is such an important part of my childhood. Do not mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> like, no pressure. Uh, sure. No pressure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my version of that when I was your age was Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah. Yes. 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 It's like... It's like it's, Wonderful family films. Now, speaking of dogs, I was shocked. Yeah. And I'm using the word shocked. Shocked. When I found out that you got a dog yeah. during lockdown, because I've never seen you as a dog person. I've never actually seen you care for anything. <laughs> 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 this was the first step to was being the, able to care. Is that what it is? I was I, slightly cut off dogs of those... because of my mom. Because my mom's so weird with her dog. She treats it like a child, and also she does that annoying thing, which is really bad around this time of year, because at Christmas, not only does she buy presents for her dog, but she also buys presents for herself that she then wraps up and pretends that the dog has given her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Which, when you say it slowly, is so is nuts. And on Christmas, we all have to sit there and watch her. It's like, oh, I wonder what Philomena's bought <laughs> Mummy this year. <laughs> you know, you bought the damn you thing, did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the level of presents as well is a joke. She gave Philomena last year, like, artisan biscuits that were all different flavours, and then she's there in front of us, and I've been given some crap, you know, some deodorant or something, yeah. and then Philomena, the favoured child, the little dog, is being fed these biscuits, and my mum's like, oh, which one did you prefer, Philomena, the, the rosemary and sea salt or the cayenne pepper? I was like, how refined a palate do you think your dog has, Yeah. Mom? Didn't seem that refined just now as she was outside licking another dog's <laughs> It's madness. 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 But now you're a dog person. Yeah, but I'm not that mad. Like, but I'm, I think I'm, you're, no, I, I can see I'm not going to get that mad. How big is the dog? The dog's very small at the moment, but, you know, if you love it enough, they can grow ten feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> now, John, let's congratulate you. Your third book of poems. That's in your right. Can yes. see a dog tease. I love the title. Yes. It's out now. Uh, as with the other books, you wrote it, you did all of the illustrations. Uh, what's this one about? Well, this way, they, they've all been uh, kind of satirical takedowns of, of contemporary politics, principally the Trump administration, a man I call Dumpty. But <laughs> this one, this one is the third of a trilogy. They all, they're all New York Times bestsellers. It absolutely, to they my are. complete astonishment. Uh, and this one, you know, because of the last election, uh, uh, this is old news, so... I cast Dumpty aside and went back in history and sort of scared up all of his precursors. Uh, I, I, it's called a Confederacy of Dumpty's Profiles of American Scoundrels in Verse. <laughs> so it, it sort of goes chronologically from... Um, I, I found the most amazing scoundrels. Yeah. People like uh, this quack doctor, John Romulus Brinkley, uh, who, who injected goat glands into men's testicles to promote virility and then became a gigantic American radio star, like the father of American talk radio. Right. Wait, sorry, that doesn't work. It, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. You haven't met John <laughs> Romulus Brinkley. You have to read my book, you I'm see. i going to read the book now. Uh, and it, 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 it works its way through history up until the present day, and it ends with a, a series of limericks about present-day figures. And someone's just told me, I, you have pre I'm very honoured by this, you've prepared something yes, for that's, uh, me. This yes, it, it, yeah. literally, within the last two hours, I, I decided to write an, uh, a limerick for and about you, James. Okay. Uh, it, it involves our history. You, you recall from early appearances on your show that uh, James beat me out for a Tony Award for Best Actor in a Play in the year 2012. He was in One Man, Two Governors and took the town by storm, and I was a bitter loser. So, 
<laughs> I've written a limerick for that, for the, it, to, that recalls that occasion for this occasion. James Corden, with effortless ease, brought all of New York to its knees, but he sparked acrimony when he pilfered a Tony from all of his co-nominees. <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote that for you, as you see. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Bless you. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs>